Uh, thank you very much. All right, hi, uh, my name is Tom Card. I'm the uh, 3D um, Survey Services Manager at Landscape Engineering. Um, it is a uh, survey company um, with, uh, with plenty of years' experience. But I'll come on to that in a bit. Uh, my objectives uh, for today are basically to, uh, to help understand how various technologies, various new technologies and existing technologies are used to uh, map the riverbed scour around bridges and structures and then also looking at how different data sets can be combined so underwater, above water, laser, sonar data sets plus a few other little bits and pieces can be combined to provide a, a big uh, rich data set uh, from which various deliverables can be uh, extracted. So uh, I'll start off with some introductions, uh, then we'll look at uh, various current working practices, uh, and then introducing these new techniques that we've been uh, using. I'll talk also about how we control the data sets, how we combine the data sets, um, before looking uh, at various enhanced deliverables that we've been uh, putting together. So, Landscape Engineering, the company I work for, uh, we provide various survey uh, and geospatial engineering services. Um, it is based on 26 years of domestic and international survey experience. We use a multidisciplinary approach. We have uh, surveyors working out uh, on the sort of streets of London, mapping buried utilities, we do building surveys, we do a, a wide variety of uh, um, um, sort of laser scanning surveys, road surveys, road mapping. And we've also done a bit of bathymetric work. That was based from our uh, managing director's uh, experience in the past. He likes to, uh, every now and again, get on a little rib, pot potter out, with a little dual frequency uh, system, just uh, getting some data on rivers and small lakes, things like that, just likes to keep in it, really. Um, and then we have, uh, we have basically our uh, three primary uh, bases, of one in our head office in Shrewsbury, in Shropshire, uh, and we also have uh, Plymouth and London offices as well. And so we've, uh, we've been laser scanning since 2007. We, uh, we originally got the, uh, the Leica scan station, which is uh, it's a bit old and clunky now, but it still does the job. We have uh, newer scanners since then as well. We were mobile mapping since 2011. Um, we uh, were the first in the UK, first com company in the UK to, uh, to get one of the Topcon IPS2 mobile mapping systems. Um, and I will, I'll, again, I'll touch on that as well. And then we've been using the Blueview. The BV5000, we, we uh, did some trials last year and we've recently invested in one, um, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that as well. So this is the project that I'll be, uh, that I'll be referring to primarily throughout the talk. Um, the scope of work were to uh, scan the underwater elements of the bridge. This bridge is on the River Trent in Gainsborough. Uh, it is tidal. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the, the River Trent, but there is uh, what we didn't realise at the time. They have something called the the Agia or the Agia, which is a little bit like the Seven Bore, where the tide floods in and the uh, basically floods in in two hours and out again in ten. And uh, on the various spring tides, you get a you get a wave which comes up, uh, uh, which is uh, which is quite impressive. Um, we're also uh, we're looking at scanning the, uh, the above water elements to provide a point, a point cloud. So we're using laser scanners to produce a LiDAR point cloud. Uh, and essentially the, uh, our client wanted to reduce or potentially remove the requirement to send divers down. So that was the, uh, that was, the that was all uh, working. So the current working practice, um, how could the data that uh, the, uh, the client was looking for be obtained? Well, for photography, if you wanted to photograph under bridge structures, you're looking at boat access, you're looking at uh, potentially pontoons, scaffolding, 
maybe even rope access on larger structures, sending divers down to uh, look into the water. Um, and this is getting out, so you're getting photography, you're getting videos, you're getting diver reports, laser scanning can uh, provide uh, three-dimensional information, um, but also, say, bathymetry and multi-beam data as well. So that is, uh, that's what they're currently getting. I mean, in this particular case, they weren't using anything, any, any, any bathymetry, uh, some basic bathymetry, but no multi-beam. It's, uh, it's a very, uh, very silty environment. And you'll see an example on the, on the right there of uh, the, uh, the sort of diver report that they were getting, which wasn't telling them a huge amount of information. So they were looking to get more information uh, than what than, uh, than was being shown there. So let me show you the, the, uh, the technologies that we use during, uh, during this particular project, the BV5000. There it is. Um, and that's uh, our, let's see, our rib. The, uh, the rib uh, from where we deploy it. Um, you can see here we've, we've uh, had an arm put on which we can then lower and uh, easily raise and lower the, uh, the system into the water. And then we've got the, uh, the Faro Focus as well um, <coughs> which we use for, uh, alongside the scan station. So we'll use the scan station uh, with its, its time of flight to, to get sort of four main scans of the bridge. Um, you get a much better resolution on the sort of the dark and the wet surfaces that the, uh, the farrow won't necessarily pick up. And then we use the farrow, which is much faster, to then fill in any gaps, perhaps over the top of the bridge, or if you can get right underneath one of the, uh, the arches, get, uh, put, a, put a scan under there. So, the Teledyne BVB5000, the 3D mechanical scanning sonar. Uh, just a quick uh, just summary of what, it, uh, what it's capable of. Uh, it can do a, a 360 degree by 30 degree scan in six minutes. So typically we're looking at around about 18 to 24 minutes to do a, uh, uh, to do a full sort of dome, near dome scan. Uh, it's, it usually takes maybe maybe half an hour once of the system being in the water once it's all been post it's doing its post processing well maybe five minutes of that so so pretty quick really to get a to get a uh, uh, one of these uh, one of these positions here um, it's compact it's portable it comes in a lovely little uh, pelican case um, easily liftable by one person. <clears throat> very quick setup. You can uh, you can instantly check the data once it's come through, and you can also see it coming through in two D as well. And you get a very a standard dot uh, x y z output from from the system. So nice, nice, straightforward. Okay. So acquiring the blue view data, we uh, what are we going to do? We a uh, couple of options available to us here. We could lower it from the bridge or the structure, um, or we could lower it from our cousin side rib. We, we originally did look at lowering it from the bridge, as you can see here. Um, we, we had a go. It wasn't quite as straightforward as we, uh, we anticipated. As you might be able to see here, there is a reasonable flow. So as soon as the, uh, yeah, as soon as the, uh, the tripod hit the water, there it went, sort of off on the, off on the, uh, sort of dragged with the, uh, with the flow. And if, as you can imagine, if you're depending on the time of tide you're doing it, uh, and the, uh, with, with two hours of, uh, with the water flooding in in two hours, there's, there's a hell of a flow then, so you're trying to avoid that time. And the amount of time when the water is actually still is uh, five minutes, maybe, if that, before it starts moving the other way again. So uh, not, not really an option, lowering it from the bridge. Much more successful, lowering it from the, uh, from the, from the rib. Um, nice, it's a very simple system. Just a little pulley there, lower it down. 
Uh, this is actually our first try out with it. So it uh, worked, worked very well. It can be rotated around the, uh, the two sides and the front of the boat. So we can deploy it wherever, wherever we need to. Uh, right, this is just a quick uh, video showing the, uh, how it's deployed. Drop it down with the, uh, the cord attached, does the scan, and there we go. Scan location. Uh, okay, so the data. This is how we, uh, we treat, the, we initially treat the data. So as I've said, we, we lower the system into the water, we acquire the data. And then uh, the result in the XYZ point cloud, we then, uh, we then bring it into like a cyclone, uh, um, whereby we can then do a variety of things, uh, clean it, remove the noise. Uh, we, we also register and level the data as well, which I'll, I'll talk about in the next couple of slides. Uh, and then also register it to the laser data from the, uh, uh, the above water survey. So the LiDAR data from the laser scanner. Uh, again, we utilize the Faro Focus 3D. Uh, in this case, we, auto, we also did the, uh, uh, the Leica scan station as well. Five primary scans were acquired uh, around the, uh, the actual structure of the bridge. And then we did, I think, another 11 or 12 over the top and just to provide a complete picture for the client. Um, we referenced it to Ordnance Survey. Uh, we removed the scale factor. Um, so work in a nice scale factor one environment. Um, we then, that data was then again brought into site like a cyclone for again cleaning and merging with the uh, sonar data. So, <clears throat> registering the, uh, the Blueview data, uh, we're going to level it. This is, I suppose, typically how it would come in straight from the, uh, uh, straight from the system. I mean, we're not, uh, it's a, that, that, is, that is a 3D, but imagine a side view. So, what we're looking at here, we've got a couple of uh, bridge uh, piers here and here. Um, this you can see a little uh, XYZ uh, coordinate vertex there. That's where the actual scan took place. And essentially, there's the riverbed there. So the chances of you actually dropping the, uh, the system onto the riverbed perfectly level are fairly remote. Um, so the first uh, thing we have to do is we have to level it. Um, We've, uh, when, the, when this particular one, this, this noise you see here, there was, the, the, wa the water was very silty, but uh, so we were, sort of went through a bit of a cleaning stage. So we had a, from our knowledge of working with laser scanning and mobile mapping point clouds, we were able to uh, put, put, that, uh, put that knowledge to, uh, to fixing this data. So there's a couple of options we have routes we can go down. We can either join the data, all the underwater data together first, then level it to the, uh, the above water data, or you can treat each one individually. It depends on the, uh, the amount of overlap that you've got, what your uh, common structures you have. What we have here, we've uh, uh, we created were a couple of reference spheres. So these can be dropped onto the, uh, the riverbed um, and they act as common reference points between scans. So that helps us join scans together from, uh, from underwater. So <clears throat> we have seven degrees of freedom that we need to, uh, to sort out. As you can see from here, we've got to try and uh, do various rotations. So essentially the uh, the primary way we do it, we, we find a, uh, um, an assumed surface level or a, uh, well, we have a lot of time, we, have, we, we assume that uh, a bridge pier, we find an assumed uh, vertical structure, such as the bridge pier or uh, 
maybe a, maybe a pile, a, a pile or something like that. We we can check the verticality from the uh, from the laser data, if necessary. Um, so clean the data, then we can rotate it and then rotate it again. Essentially, what we're doing is if you have a um, if you wonky scan, we bring it up in one direction and then. Uh, the uh, 90 degrees in the other direction as well, and that provides us with essentially a level scan. We can then use the underwater reference objects to uh, link these scans together if necessary. Um, the, other, the other thing we have to think about is the, uh, the speed of sound in water, so just making sure that that is correct, and then we can we, again we can check that against the laser data as well. Um, we do we do we do the calculations beforehand, put it into the software, but and then we can just double check everything all the way through, making sure that we're getting the most accurate data that we possibly can. So we have our levelled um, underwater sonar data. We need to bring that to the, the top side somehow. Again, there's a, there's a couple of options for this. We need to, uh, firstly, we could use tides. Brilliant. Laser scan the structure at low tide. Uh, stick the, the BV5000 in the water at high tide, overlapping data. So, very good. That was our original plan for this project. However, given the tides, it didn't quite work out that way. So we ended up having to work, rather than the spring tide, we ended up working on the neap tide. Whereas at this part, the actual variation in the tides went from being, say, three meters on a spring to, uh, well, it was about, I'd say, probably less than half a meter. Um, tidal range on a neap tide. Okay, so we can use tides potentially. Common reference objects with the next one. So we have the bridge pier. We have um, uh, the bridge pier that we've used so far. We've been fortunate enough to, uh, to have uh, various corners, various structures that we can say, yes, these are common reference points. This point e in the sonar data equals this point in the uh, scan data. So we're using straight edges and alignments. And then as a, uh, um, a final uh, system we can deploy, we, uh, we have a, a bioreference pole system, which is something we've, uh, we've made up. Essentially, it's made of a, uh, a three-meter vertical, well, three meter straight um, polyethylene tube. And the top and the bottom there are reference objects, reference spheres. This can then be put into the water, uh, both above, so it sits both above and below the water line. And then when, uh, so this is if, you, if there aren't any tides, for example. Um, so what, what we have there is if we can get it vertical, then that's all the better. Uh, but it's not often possible to get perfectly vertical. However, we have the tube. So what we have is we have uh, basically a reference object at the top, which we captured with a laser scanner. Uh, we have um, the, the orientation and direction of the tube. So we can, we can use like a cyclone to essentially create a model of that tube and then extend that down. We know the length of the tube, so then we have the position of the reference object in the water, which the BV5000 is picking up. So we can use that as well in uh, non-tidal areas. And then we also, uh, with these bridge surveys, just a very small area, we, we um, stick the uh, little single beam in, do a couple of transects upstream and down of the bridge, and it just provides a bit of verification on, the, uh, on our registration and joining of the data. So what we have end up with is the laser data here. That's the archway, this is the bridge pier. And then the uh, underwater data here, the BB5000 data here. Okay. 
I'll quickly nip through this because we didn't use this system on uh, this particular project, but on a previous project we had. So this is the mobile mapping system. Uh, it is, essentially consists of GPS, GNSS, camera, uh, IMU, and five laser scanners. So we have, it's quite versatile where we can deploy it. So normally it's, it spends its days out on the, uh, on the car driving around various roads of the UK. Uh, but we have uh, put it on, uh, here as you see we've had it deployed on the rib. And I believe that is the, uh, the Galloper, uh, yeah. uh, when we did some work with the, with the PLA. Uh, we put it on there, and it, as long as you've got uh, some, some good uh, visibility to the uh, satellites, you can get some pretty good results. Uh, it can cope with short outages underneath, say, um, under bridges is fine, under um, uh, jetties as long as you're maintaining a good trajectory, it, it, you maintain a very good level of accuracy. <coughs> and you're cr we're creating them point clouds such as this. Um, these, I think these are all created with the older system with three scanners, so now our upgraded system does have the five scanner system, so the point cloud density is, uh, is improved greater than this as well. And then the advantage you have there is you can have the point cloud data uh, and the photography. Um, but I'll, I'll come on to that again in a little bit. Um, and then, yes, the control is it's, it's processed against a GNSS base station. Uh, again, data cleaned, uh, and then the photos and uh, point cloud can be exported, and the scale, any scale factors can be removed if, if necessary. And the data can then be uh, uh, combined with either your laser data that you collected from your static system or the, the, the BV5000 data. Okay, so the tools that we have, we've got the sonar, we've got the laser scanner, and we've got the mobile mapping. Okay, so we'll look now at some various uh, deliverables that we've been presenting to, uh, to our clients. So we have the laser data here. We can then bring in the uh, BV5000 data. some data collected at when the tide was high, we managed to get one scan. Well, we have here, we have the, uh, one of the piers. We can see, uh, in this case, the client was interested in a uh, rock dump uh, against the bridge pier. So uh, if you saw at the beginning, there was, uh, over to the left, there was a, a rock dump, which you might see again as it turns around. So you see here the rocks dumped up against the bridge pier. Um, this is the sort of uh, video that we might provide to uh, a client just to show them the sort of thing that we can get out of the data and then we'll uh, enable them with a point cloud viewing software so that they can uh, go in and extract their own information. I'll come on to, I, I'm going to uh, re revisit a couple of these videos again shortly. Um, but we can see pretty, very good resolution. Uh, and again, bridge pier rock with, uh, with rock dump. And the client was very happy with this. This is the sort of information they hadn't seen before. This level of detail, they can immediately visualize what, what's there. Okay, so standard plans, sections, profiles. Um, useful information that they, they can then see, uh, okay, well, we need to uh, look at the scour issues around the, the pier. Um, for the navigable rivers, does it need any kind of dredging? Um, we can provide complete profiles, including the bridge uh, structure as well. Um, the, the amount of detail that we're able to get out is incredibly impressive. So we've got this, this little outfall pipe looking under a riverbank here. This is a, this is a riverbank. 
and we can see where it's been undercut. Maybe some wooden slats here. You can see right underneath where it's, where it's undercut, so this, this sort of information is very useful to them. <coughs> uh, again, this one, uh, this is from an earlier project, not the Gainsborough one, but we can see the tree here, or a branch is struck, uh, stuck on the bridge pier, something they might want to have took issue with. And we can also see here that the, uh, the bridge pier is actually sitting on, essentially still, sitting on the piles, uh, which they weren't aware of. They, they, they didn't, uh, didn't, didn't realize at all that uh, that, that, that was a, that situation was there. Um, so we'll visit this one again. Uh, so we saw this one earlier, but we'll just look at it again in a bit more detail so we can see these structures. This is the bridge pier. There's, you know, note the lack of rock dump around here. Uh, this is one of the side, well, side channels, so it's not, not too much of an issue for them. Um, but we can see these structures sticking out of the, uh, the riverbed, um, possibly associated with some, uh, some mooring dolphin or jetty structure that was there before. Um, and see the level of detail that we can pick out rocks, boulders. Uh, so this is the rock, rock dump. Again, we can do rock dump analysis. We'll work out potentially if they have a, uh, an idea of where the, uh, the bed should be. We can potentially give them volumes of uh, rock that's uh, been put down there. Uh, so, peer inspection, we can see the, the rock here. We can then look in and look, look in careful detail along the pier itself, look for signs of damage, look for signs of uh, uh, wear and tear. So, other things we've been providing to the clients, we have this photographic record with the, with the mobile mapping system. We're looking up and under bridge piers, which again, is difficult to get to perhaps. Uh, but the added advantage of that, of course, is that you have the, uh, the laser scanning data in as well. So if you wanted to start creating asset inventories, you can say, well, um, we can immediately jump in and look at the photography and get 3D information from the photography. We start modeling, start um, creating uh, a database. Uh, <clears throat> so here, yeah, so for example, uh, acid inventory. If uh, the clients know where mooring rings are along, we can start building up a GIS system. Okay. So that's the end of the uh, sort of the deliverables, but as you can see, there's, there's a huge range of uh, potential uh, deliverables that we can provide to clients. Um, what we're doing here is we're, we're, we're complementing, uh, not necessarily replacing the, the sort of a dive, standard diving report. So it can work both ways. We might send the, the BB5000 in first scan, or well, this area we might want to put a diver in just to have a look, or a diver would be in and say, well, something's going on here, we're not sure. Uh, so we can uh, then send the, the BB5000 in and scan it in more detail. So there's, there's clearly there's health and safety benefits <coughs> from that. We're using a multidiscipline approach, so laser scanning, mobile mapping, uh, underwater, sonar, getting a uh, very enriched data sets. Uh, and that has helped us provide clients with uh, some, some enhanced deliverables that they, they weren't usually uh, uh, getting. So uh, it's, uh, it's been very popular with, the, uh, with our clients. There we go.